dear students welcome to this course on research methodology this course is given to you almost at the end of your msc program keeping in mind that this course would help you in preparing your dissertation and as well as that the data that you collect out of your experiments that you are doing and involved may help you to publish in near future so basically this course is going to help you in two ways number 1 it will help you to write a good dissertation secondly it will also help you to publish your data in a renowned journal basically i will be dealing with two units unit number 1 and unit number 4 in unit number 1 these are the concepts that i would be dealing about we will begin discussing about searching interest of research then defining the research question approaches and methodology objective significance and techniques of research retrieving research materials in other words the review of literature compiling the records which means how do you compile the data that you receive introduction to kinds of scientific documents like research paper review paper book reviews thesis conference project reports etc and finally in this chapter we will also see what it is patenting mean and what does it mean by ipr in unit number 4 we will concentrate on the scientific writing proper in this we will study about the imrad system we will also introduce you certain automated referencing softwares like mendeley and endnote at the end of the course you will also should get familiarized with some of the publishers namely known as nature elsevier springer etc you also should have a proper understanding at the end of the course what do you mean by citations what do you mean by impact factor what is h index and what is i10 index and once you have your data after your experiments the course also will help you to find a suitable journal to publish your article in order to publish your article you will be also taught how to write the manuscript for publication and once you have written your pub, your manuscript how will you deal with the publishers how will you submit them how will you follow it up if the review comes back from the reviewers especially if it is a peer reviewed journal how will you respond to that reviews so you will also know at the end what is the basic format of a thesis or a dissertation or how do you write the thesis then we will also deal with oral and post presentation when you go for conferences in science especially conferences related to life science then finally we will also learn 
how to write a project proposal to the funding agencies. So these are the basic two units that I would be covering up. The basic question that I would like to ask, what is the condition of the scientists of the 17th century? When there was no mobile, when there was no internet, when there was no laptop, how did people really communicate to each other, especially the scientists? How did they reveal the new knowledge that they have produced or gained or created through their research? How did they share the data that they have obtained through the research? It's a basic question. There were two primary ways by which the scientists shared their ideas or shared their knowledge. The first way is the scientist waited for the fox to have enough ideas, enough data to publish a whole book about a particular research by a particular scientist. So they simply waited for a scientist to publish a book. And once a book is published, from there, the, re the rest of the scientific world should retrieve that knowledge from that book. And the second way by which the scientist communicated in the 17th century is to write letters. So knowing that this particular scientist is carrying out a research in this particular field, if I am interested in knowing about that, then I would write a letter to him or her asking him to share this particular information to me. So mainly these two ways, one is to publish, another one is to write letter asking for information. So these are the two ways by which the 17th century scientists communicated with each other. Now there is a concept called invisible college. It means scientists writing letter to each other to receive information in order to be at the cutting edge of the research in science. So what happened in the middle of the 17th century? In the middle of the 17th century, a small group of scientists invented a third way of spreading scientific news. It means they said, instead of writing letters, why don't we come together and meet each other to share the data that we have obtained so that we can discuss about it and after discussing we can come to a conclusion. So that is how these meetings turned into the first scholarly societies like the Royal Society founded in 1660 or the French Academy of Science founded in 1666. So from then on, the scientists still gather in person to share their results, what they have obtained from their experiments. We now call them as conferences or workshops where even today scientists gather together and share their new knowledge that they have obtained through the experiments. At one of the first meeting of the Royal Society, someone said in this way, 
maybe we should write this stuff down get it printed or share it with the folks who can't make it today so someone in the conference felt that that it is not enough alone that we come together and meet and discuss with each other but we also should compile these data into one single book so that those who cannot attend this conference can also profit by reading these data and research so in 1665 with the blessing of the royal society oldenburg pulled together the content he then had the first issue of the philosophical transactions of the royal society printed and solicited subscription so this is how the first scientific issue comes about the so called the scientific journal you know this miracle maker he is alexander fleming the man who discovered penicillin these four scientists toronto doctors on track of diabetes cure in 1922 they have discovered that insulin could be the best cure for diabetes So, 1922, insulin was first used in the treatment of diabetes. As I said, it was in Toronto. You would remember these two figures, Watson and Crick, who were responsible in giving us the discovery that the DNA is a double helix structure. what would have happened if this knowledge that discovered penicillin insulin or the double helical structure of dna was not shared with us if these scientists made be alexander fleming or those doctors of toronto or even watson and crick after they have done their experiments after they have achieved their data if they have not shared the results and conclusion with us we would not be profiting out of these discovery of penicillin insulin or dna so what is important and crucial is that every research must lead to the discovery of a new knowledge and that new knowledge should be eventually made available to the public so that is how the aspect of publication comes into so every research is beyond one's reward or patent or money so technically speaking a researcher should not be aiming to work only for gaining profit he or she as a researcher should be service minded that is every research in all the fields basically for preservation and nurturing of human lives biodiversity and environment which means ecology so every research must concentrate these three elements in short to say the research is basically at the service of the human society therefore the knowledge that is gained through the research or discovery has to be shared through publication so this publication of the data or the publication of the research becomes very important for any development of any country or any human society
for the country that invest more money on research is a country that would see its progress and development in a remarkable way here is a list of 20 countries that invest highest amount of money in research countries like united states and norway austria iceland luxembourg all of them they heavily spend money on research and we can see the development in these country unfortunately our country has not been having its place in the 20 names that we see here 